Welcome back uh, to the module on uh, road and your surgery. So today we will try and cover a very important session of euthanasia in rodents. It is uh, very very important in terms of the um, animal ethical uh, guidelines that are laid out by the CPCSCA and today's session is as per those guidelines alright. So it is important to also to know the techniques of uh, harvesting different organs. So we will try and cover first the euthanasia uh, aspect then we will try and look at the uh, organ harvesting alright. So you need to uh, sort of understand why is it such a uh, big deal and why we having an entire session dedicated for euthanasia. So trying to see that you know the uh, rats are um, you know killed with uh, with human intention you know the killing the simple definition is that the human killing is basically the induction of death in an animal utilizing a method that results in rapid loss of consciousness with minimum pain and distress. So the key those keywords are minimum pain and distress. So it is basically um, the other terminology used for euthanasia is mercy killing or it, it, it is this term is used in humans as well. Of course in India uh, it is not legalized the western countries the euthanasia is used for humans as well when they are suffering with terminal illness when cure is not possible when they are on a ventilator and in a deep coma where there are no hopes then again the life support systems are withdrawn whereas in animals we are trying to induce death you know with the minimum pain and distress that we can cause to the animal. So in a um, really on a humanitarian uh, basis. So it is the human killing that is called the euthanasia of the animals. So all research personnel must receive adequate and appropriate training. It is very important how you um, uh, employ a particular technique. It is this training is also import, uh, important to know the different methods that are available and it is for different animal different techniques are to be used and it is very important that um, none of the guidelines are missed. They are laid out with the same intention that uh, pain and distance are minimal at the time of death of this these particular lab animals alright. So, there is a need to evaluate vital signs in the species to confirm the death. So it is not only important that you employ that technique but you need to ensure that animal is really dead by monitoring the vital signs. So you need to really understand how this uh, vital signs are evaluated. It is not easy just to see that it could be unconscious but can be still breathing. Alright, so the entire intention is lost if you really do not know how to ensure that the animal is dead. So another important consideration is that euthanasia is never done in the animal housing rooms except in a very special circumstances where the animal has um, you know acquired some sort of a disease infectious disease. So in order to prevent the transmission of these infectious agents to other places you do the euthanasia in the animal housing. Except for this special circumstance it has to be done in a euthanasia chamber or in a, a facility where euthanasia is arranged. So the animal has to be transferred from its housing or from the experimental arena to the euthanasia area to conduct the final euthanasia alright. So what are the reasons why do you really need to do euthanasia? So at the end of the experiment or where there might be continuing adverse effects. So generally these animals are euthanized and not alone and a lot let alone to uh, survive uh, for a simple reason that you are trying to use the animal for a particular experiment which can involve various harmful agents one thing and then of course you are using various uh, chemicals which are under study yet. So which can harm other animals or even for that matter the research personnel themselves. So it is very important that you try and uh, euthanize the rat at the end of the 
study generally small animals are not um, let alone to survive but it's different the ethical considerations are different when it comes to non human primate model where generally we allow allow them to survive all right so these animals are these small animals like the rodents are um, bred in for the sake of experiments so once experiments are over they are generally um, euthanized and also to get the tissue for scientific purposes like you you would have implanted uh, some um, various um, uh, with various electrodes into the brain you really need to know where the electrodes have gone what have they done and is there any uh, damage to the area beyond the consideration of the study so you need to look into those tissues is there are there any uh, toxic effects of those implants or toxic effects of the chemicals that you just uh, instilled into the brain is there a systemic spread of those chemicals so you need to collect the blood and other tissues for the scientific purposes and that those are done only by euthanizing the animal so we need to make sure that pain distress and suffering are likely to exceed the uh, the designated level or to reduce suffering both are uh, the reasons to uh, commit uh, to do the euthanasia all right so uh, if your uh, experiment involves the level of pain and distress and there is some infection that has happened during the procedure and the animal is really suffering beyond uh, beyond the limits of your experimental methodology then again better to sacrifice the animal uh, just to make sure to reduce the suffering you are trying to end the life of that particular uh, lab animal now right, that's another reason why you would do the euthanasia so as i said to limit the spread of infection is another important reason if there is a full blown infection you want to limit the spread so one is to reduce the suffering of the animal other reason is to limit the spread of infection to the other animal so the entire colony can get infected if there is such a threat then again you are trying to euthanize it and when they are no longer suitable for breeding that's another um, a reason why euthanasia is considered and the unwanted stock or those with unsuitable characteristics for example the type or the animal or the sex of the animal is not needed generally those animals are again euthanized all right because these are lab animals they are brought into the lab atmosphere and for some reason they are not ideal for your experiments so instead of letting them um, uh, survive usually those animals are uh, euthanized also to save the lab resources and to limit the um, you know chances of them acquiring some disease and then um, endangering the safety of other lab animals gen for that those reasons these animals are sacrificed too all right so what are the uh, different methods of uh, euthanasia is very very important to understand all the methods so you will appreciate the one particular few uh, one particular method or few methods that as that has been chosen by the cps csa committee to employ uh, you know this euthanasia techniques so broadly they are divided into non physical and physical methods so the choice of these methods generally depends on the age and species the number of animals that are involved and plus the objectives of the protocol your experimental methodology also guide the method of anesthesia that are used okay that you will understand how your experiment has to do with the um, exp- the method of euthanasia both are interlinked and it's very important to select the right method of euthanasia before you do that and it's very important that these are even laid out in your study protocol before you present it to the animal ethical committee you are supposed to uh, document and ensure the same method of euthanasia is followed throughout your experiment so generally there are two ways where a chemical agent can be um, installed into the body either by inhalational or injectable methods they are generally preferred over the physical methods such as cervical dislocation and decapitation it be- it does look inhuman so 
generally preferred techniques are non-physical methods all right so now in non-physical methods you have inhalants like anesthetic agents or carbon dioxide or you inject uh, drugs like barbiturates all right generally non-physical methods are preferred over physical methods so this table is taken up again from the ccsa guidelines which is the latest one which was released in 2017 so these are the available methods for euthanasia so starting from you know mouse rat hamster up to non human primates you can see how it varies when the uh, animal species is changed all right by and large there are more and more techniques available or the or at the disposal for rodents and you can see for non human primates how the choice comes so narrow all right this is the entire spectrum so let's uh, focus on the rodent for today's uh, session definitely the electrocution is not recommended for any of the species that's totally inhuman to uh, employ that method of course these are these physical methods are used very sparingly used and generally we use this inhalational method where carbon monoxide dioxide carbon dioxide plus chloroform all these combinations mixers are used as a euthanizing agent in small animals and you have various drugs at your disposal to use it for uh, rodents like barbiturate chloral hydrate ketamine overdose and sodium pentothal so if you wonder as to why these methods are enlisted the bottom line is that the pain and distress has to be minimal and another reason is that it should not interfere with the experimental methodology you're trying to study some uh, drug agent and this particular drug should not interact with that and affect your um, study analysis so that again is a very important factor to keep in mind when you choose a certain method of euthanasia and the methods which are completely unacceptable are these physical methods of decompression decompression chambers are used in olden days whereas now it is completely given up decompression chambers uses low ambient air pressures without extra oxygen it causes extreme distress uh, to the animal and the entire uh, purpose is lost when you use such methods stunning is by giving a forceful blow to the middle of the head just behind the eyes which will cause the uh, significant brain injury and uh, endanger the life and inhalation of gases like nitrogen argon flushing is also unacceptable and of course none of these drugs should be used for euthanasia and it is completely um, banned for this particular uh, methodology all right so it's very important that you avoid such drugs or avoid such uh, methodology before uh, you plan your euthanasia protocol all right so coming to non physical methods so here in non physical methods you use uh, drugs or chemicals which are involved uh, which causes uh, generally involves exposure of the animal to the uh, particular agent by way of inhalational or even intravenous or intra peritoneal administration so there are some chemicals or drugs which is going to suppress the brain activity and lead to cessation of uh, breathing and uh, circulatory system so this is where the non physical methods comes in and then it is highly recommended that you use only pharmaceutical grade compounds where it ensures in a right dosage it causes smooth and rapid death it's not any over the count counter chemicals like rat poisons or some sort of chemicals like that which will cause you know increase secretions increase suffering increase pain and distress and the entire purpose is lost so that's the whole idea that you better use the pharmaceutical grade compounds when we are using these drugs or chemicals so when it comes to the um, usage of inhalant anesthetic agent we use something known as euthanasia jar this is the um, method which is highly recommended whereas when you but the agent generally preferred is carbon dioxide not 
any other inhalant anesthetic agent. But for the sake of completion, we are covering it. But the methodology remains the same either it is an anesthetic gas or carbon dioxide, the methodology remains the same. Uh, whereas, this is a simple um, euthanasia jar where the anesthetic agent can be used. Carbon dioxide requires a very special apparatus called uh, carb carbon dioxide euthanasia chamber wherein you have an inlet and outlet valves and all that. Whereas, here it, this is a simple uh, way the small animals uh, can be uh, killed using such euthanasia method. So, this euthanasia jar will contain a small plastic or glass container with a known volume and then there has to be a secure lid and you can see that there is a wire mesh or a perforated floor and underneath it you have a cotton padding given. So, this anesthetic agent which you are going to use will be soaked with the, uh, the cotton will be soaked with this agent in this proportion all right. So, it is either uh, iso usually what we use is isofluorine or isofluorine mixture in propylene glycol in this proportion 20 percent uh, and 30 percent volume for mice and rats respectively all right. And the mixture is around 1.5 to 2 ml per 500 ml volume of the jar. So, this is very important to consider. Your ultimate idea is to cause the rapid uh, death of the animal. You need to ensure you are using right amount of the anesthetic agent or carbon dioxide gas so that it occupies the given volume of the euthanasia chamber and it causes a rapid cessation of breathing. Whereas, if you if your flow rate or for that matter the dosage is wrong for the given um, size of the chamber, then the uh, suffering is prolonged you know. So, that is your whole idea and you need to ensure that there is a, uh, there is no direct contact of the animal and that is the reason why the cotton pad is given at the bottom with a perforated floor where the volatile gas comes out and then the animal breathes in. So, the exposure time is only around 3 to 5 minutes where the animal shall be, be left inside the con container until the cessation, cessation of breathing is observed. Once that is done, animal shall be removed from the jar and then your organ harvesting can continue. So, that is the whole idea all right. So, the most preferred method and the currently followed method uh, which is recommended by the uh, CPCSA guidelines is carbon dioxide asphyxiation all right. So, the anesthetic agents and drugs can interfere with your experimental results, it can cause organ changes. So, in order to prevent those effects, the most um, preferred agent and the most preferred methodology for euthanasia is carbon dioxide asphyxiation. So, we will go through in detail about carbon dioxide asphyxiation because this is something all of you need to know and should get trained as to how to handle the carbon dioxide gas and how do you really handle these carbon dioxide asphyxiation chambers because this is something you need to employ at the end of your experiment to for the sake of anesthesia, uh, euthanasia all right. So, in this session we will go through advantages and disadvantages. In next session we will take up in detail about the do's and do not and techniques and stuff all right. So, the advantages are that it causes a rapid depression all right with analgesic and anesthetic effect for by something known as carbon dioxide narcosis. So, it is nothing but the entire central nervous system goes in for depression when the carbon dioxide builds up. Brain is one organ where oxygen is must you know the oxygenation when it goes down there is naturally the depression of the entire CNS function occurring. So, that is one reason why carbon dioxide asphyxiation is the most preferred methodology because it causes rapid depression depression of with analgesic and anesthetic effects. So, the pain the very um, crux of the euthanasia procedure is that it should be a painless death for the animal. So, naturally the carbon dioxide narcosis causes that analgesia or an, an anesthetic effects it numbs the animal and then it causes depression of the CNS function that is the beauty of this particular method. So, 
and moreover it is readily available and can be purchased in a compressed gas cylinders that is another advantage and it is non flammable, non explosive and it poses minimal hazard to the personnel. The carbon dioxide is a normal gas in the regular concentration and it does not really affect us directly if by accident we come in contact with this particular gas unlike the anesthetic agent where you also tend to be sleepy and it does depress our own uh, central nervous system. And the idea being non flammable non explosive is also very important because you will be using lot of these thermocoagulative equipments, cautries and stuff. So, it is become really explosive like ethers where in olden days we were using it for anesthesia and any of those inhalational agents can become really uh, dangerous when we are using and we are in the vicinity if there are cauteries and stuff which can endanger the entire uh, lab alright. So, that is another advantage and then it does not really introduce any chemical residue in the tissue that you are going to harvest. So, if your study requires an extensive pathological analysis, if there is a uh, need that you need to sample all the organs like liver and lungs and you need to draw blood, you need to make sure that the method of euthanasia does not introduce a new agent which can alter these pathological parameters that you are going to study. So, carbon dioxide is one method which does not really affect those because carbon dioxide is anyway a natural gas produced in the body. So, that is the major, that is another major advantage. What are the disadvantages? All right, this does have disadvantages and, and that is the reason why we really come across uh, these kind of carbon dioxide asphyxiation chambers such that it is very important to realize that the carbon dioxide is heavier than air and it can lead to incomplete filling of the chamber which can induce some animals to avoid the exposure. For example, if, if you look at this chamber, maybe the left half of the uh, sorry, left half of the chamber is with carbon dioxide and the other area is not really uh, having does not really have carbon dioxide. If suppose the lid is open and you are uh, yet to prepare it and if you have forgotten to put the lid back, the animal can easily jump out because um, it will go through a lot of distress when it feels that it, it can try and avoid uh, you know coming in contact with the carbon dioxide if you are trying to fill the carbon dioxide to an incomplete extent all right. And more so neonatal rodents are resistant to carbon dioxide induced euthanasia. So, that is another reason why the neonatal rodent needs entirely different uh, set of euthanasia procedures. So, Induction of loss of consciousness at lower concentration can cause lesions. Lesions are basically a, a pathological um, alteration of the structure in the up, up respiratory tract if the concentration that you have calculated is wrong. So, it is very important that in order to ensure there is a complete filling with a good concentration, you need to uh, ensure the your flow rate is good and your concentration of carbon dioxide that you are using is good enough all right. And higher concentration definitely can cause distress and the whole purpose is destroyed. So, it is very important that you keep in mind all these factors when you actually calculate the um, dosage of carbon dioxide when you calculate the flow rate of the carbon dioxide. So, that we will deal it in the uh, next session. So, what are the do's and do not that are that have to be kept in mind when you handle the carbon dioxide asphyxiation methodology. So, acceptable source for carbon dioxide again is only from the gas cylinders which are readily available. These sources should be avoided at any cost to avoid pain and distress again. So, dry eyes, fire extinguishers or various other chemical means should be avoided as a source of carbon dioxide. And animals of the same species should be placed in the chamber at any given time for euthanasia. If you want to euthanize the 3, 4 rats, you cannot mix long given rats with the Vista rat. The species has to be the same. And then there should not be any overcrowding of the animals. And if your euthanasia chamber is small and you put in 6, 7 rats into it, again the entire 
purpose is going to get defeated because they will um, suffer um, because of the inadequacy of the carbon dioxide to depress the central nervous system because there are many animals sharing the same uh, gas chamber. So, it is very important that it is also important that live animals must not be placed in a chamber with the dead animals during the anesthesia alright. So, the same uh, human intention is uh, followed here and to reduce stress should be euthanized in their home cage whenever uh, possible alright. Because th that is the um, a familiar atmosphere for the rat if possible you can use the home cage itself whenever possible alright. So, and sudden exposure to higher concentration of carbon dioxide may be distressful to some species that is very very important to uh, make sure and pre in the carbon dioxide uh, chamber is definitely not recommended because carbon dioxide um, can escape out and then the volume can come down alright. So, it and it also um, sort of prevents this distress that you are trying to avoid in first place. Alright, so these are the some of the uh, do's and do not that you need to keep in mind before employing this uh, methodology. So, that is for today's session. Uh, in the next session, we will go through the um, various techniques that are available to employ uh, carbon dioxide asphyxiation, what methodology that needs to be followed, how are you going to calculate the flow rate and how to introduce the carbon dioxide. Um, and to ensure um, a clean uh, death in the end alright so, and then follow it up with the uh, physical methods alright. Thank you for your attention.